In this video, we'll look at the concepts of oversteer and understeer for a vehicle and we'll derive the understeer gradient, which is one of the most essential performance measures for the handling of a vehicle. Let's begin with the definition of the Ackermann steer angle. Let O be the instantaneous center of rotation of a kinematic or dynamic bicycle model. Remember that any bicycle model as a rigid body always has an instantaneous center of rotation at each point in time. So O is well defined both for the kinematic and the dynamic bicycle model. Now the Ackermann steer angle, which we denote with delta bar, is defined as the angle between the line from O to the midpoint of the rear wheel and the line from O to the midpoint of the front wheel. So let's illustrate this definition a little further in the context of the kinematic bicycle model on the one hand and the dynamic bicycle model on the other hand. First, in the case of the kinematic bicycle model, we've already seen how to construct the instantaneous center of rotation. Since both wheels move along their geometric orientation, the instantaneous center of rotation O is just given as the intersection of the two perpendicular lines to the rear wheel and to the front wheel. Following the definition of the Ackermann steer angle, we already have the connection between O and the midpoint of the rear wheel and between O and the midpoint of the front wheel. Hence, the Ackermann steer angle, delta bar, is just the angle between these lines. By basic geometry, it follows that the Ackermann steer angle, delta bar, is equal to delta for the kinematic bicycle model. So why is that? If you look at these three angles, delta 90 degrees and this angle here, they have to sum up to 180 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees minus delta. And then the angles in this triangle have to sum up to 180 degrees. And we have 90 degrees here and we have 90 degrees minus delta here. So delta bar must be equal to delta. Second, let's turn our attention to the dynamic bicycle model where matters are a little more complicated. Here, the local velocities of the dynamic bicycle model at the midpoint of the rear wheel and the midpoint of the front wheel are not aligned with the geometric orientations of the wheels. And that's because there's a tire slip angle at the rear wheel and at the front wheel. The slip angles alpha r and alpha f indicate the angle between the geometric orientation of the rear wheel and the front wheel and their actual local velocity which we call vr and vf. What we need to do in order to construct the instantaneous center of rotation o for the dynamic bicycle model is to intersect the perpendicular line to the local velocity vector vr with the perpendicular line of the local velocity vector vf. So for the definition of the Ackermann steer angle delta bar in the case of the dynamic bicycle model, we already have the connecting lines from O to the midpoint of the rear wheel and from O to the midpoint of the front wheel. So delta bar is just the angle between these two dashed lines. In this case, the geometry is not quite as simple as to say that the Ackermann steer angle delta bar equals to delta. However, a similar, slightly more complicated relationship can be derived if we draw the perpendicular line from O onto the dynamic bicycle model. In fact, by basic geometric arguments, 
similar to the one that we've just made for the kinematic bicycle model, the angle between this yellow dashed line and the blue dashed line equals to alpha r, the slip angle of the rear wheel, and the angle between the blue dashed line and this yellow dashed line equals to delta minus alpha f, which is the angle between the velocity vector vf and the green dashed line. Hence, we may conclude that the Ackermann steer angle delta bar equals to the sum of these two angles. So it equals to delta minus alpha f plus alpha r for the dynamic bicycle model. Next, we define the concept of the tangential radius. To this end, let c bar be the point of the kinematic bicycle model where the slip angle is zero, meaning that the direction of the local velocity vector at c bar equals to the orientation of the vehicle. Then the tangential radius that we denote with r bar is defined simply as the length between the instantaneous center of rotation O and the point c bar. To illustrate this definition of the tangential radius, let's look again first at a kinematic bicycle model and second at the dynamic bicycle model. For the kinematic bicycle model, the point where the slip angle is zero is obviously the midpoint of the rear wheel, so this is the point C bar. The tangential radius R bar is then defined as the length between the point O and C bar, so this line here. For the dynamic bicycle model, the point C bar is given by this point because here the local velocity vector, which is perpendicular to the connection between O and the point C bar, so this velocity vector points along the orientation of the vehicle. Following again the above definition, the tangential radius r bar is given as the connection between O and C bar, so it's equal to this line here. Now let's apply a little trigonometry to derive a relationship between the tangential radius r bar and the Ackermann steer angle delta bar in both cases. For the first case of the kinematic bicycle model, this relationship can be established by looking at this right triangle here, where we can state that the tangent of delta bar equals to L divided by R bar, where L, as you remember from our definitions in a previous video, denotes the wheelbase of the vehicle, so the distance between the midpoint of the rear wheel and the midpoint of the front wheel. So in summary, we get that the Ackermann steer angle of the kinematic bicycle model is equal to the arcus tangent of L divided by R bar. For the dynamic bicycle model, matters are again a little more complicated First of all, we split the wheelbase into two terms, namely L1 and L2, which measure the distance from the midpoint of the rear wheel to C bar and the distance from the midpoint of the front wheel to C bar, respectively. Now, basic trigonometry in this right triangle delivers that the tangent of alpha r equals to L1 divided by r bar and analogously the trigonometry in this right triangle delivers that the tangent of delta minus alpha f equals to l2 divided by r bar making use of the formula delta bar equals to delta minus alpha f plus alpha r that we just derived on the previous page we do get this expression for delta bar involving two terms. One is the arcus tangent of L1 divided by R bar 
and the other one is the arcus tangent of L2 divided by R bar. So in summary, we have this formula for the relationship between the Ackermann steer angle delta bar and the tangential radius R bar for the dynamic bicycle model. Before we can actually turn to the definition of oversteer and understeer, we need to look at the experiment of steady state cornering. Given our discussion of vehicle handling performance in the previous video, the most basic experiment that you could think of is to assess the open loop system by steady state cornering. At the same time, this is probably the most important experiment to assess the handling performance of the open loop system. So what exactly do we mean by steady state cornering? Steady state cornering refers to the situation where the vehicle is driving on a perfect circle with a fixed radius by using a constant steering angle. Now, this situation is of course somewhat idealized because in reality, there are always small disturbances to the motion of the vehicle, such as winds or variations in the tire road friction coefficient and so on. So that's why in practice, small variations of the steering angle are actually needed to keep the vehicle on a circle with a fixed radius. And we're speaking of a quasi steady state cornering. But we will not worry about these details for now. Instead, for the definition of oversteer and understeer, we'll think about the theoretical steering angle that's required in order to keep the vehicle on a circle with a fixed radius. Let's start with the definition of neutral steer. So a dynamic bicycle model is said to be neutrally steering during a steady state cornering maneuver if its steering angle equals to that of a kinematic bicycle model when both models are driving on a circle with the same tangential radius R bar. Let's look at what this definition means mathematically. To start, let's compare the Ackermann angles of the kinematic and the dynamic bicycle model for the same tangential radius R bar. By the formula derived earlier in this video, delta bar kin equals to the arcus tangent of L divided by R bar. So with a small angle approximation of the tangent, this is approximately equal to L divided by R bar. For the Ackermann angle of the dynamic bicycle model, we have obtained earlier on that this is equal to the arcus tangent of L1 divided by R bar plus the arcus tangent of L2 divided by R bar. And again, with the first order approximation of the tangent, this is approximately equal to L1 divided by R bar plus L2 divided by R bar. Now remember from our definition of L1 and L2 that the sum of the two was exactly equal to the wheelbase L of the vehicle. So in total, we obtain for the Ackermann angle of the dynamic bicycle model that this is also equal to L divided by R bar. Hence, what we observe is that the Ackermann angle of the kinematic bicycle model and the Ackermann angle of the dynamic bicycle model are the same if both models drive on a circle with the same tangential radius R bar. Next, we substitute the formulas for the respective steering angles that we have obtained at the beginning of this video. And what we get if we plug this and this into this formula is this simple relationship where we can bring the two slip angles to the other side and then we get to this essential formula that states that the steering angle of the dynamic bicycle model is equal to the steering angle of the kinetic bicycle model plus the slip angle of the front wheel minus the slip angle of the rear wheel. 
with the very definition of neutral steer at the top, demanding that the steering angle of the dynamic bicycle model must equal to that of the kinematic bicycle model when driving on the same tangential radius R bar, we can thus conclude that the dynamic bicycle model is neutrally steering if the slip angles of the front wheel and the rear wheel are identical. Based on this, the dynamic bicycle model can be called oversteering if the slip angle of the front wheel is less than the slip angle of the rear wheel and the opposite case it's called understeering if the slip angle of the front wheel is greater than the slip angle of the rear wheel. Last but not least, let's make the concepts of oversteer and understeer a little more intuitive by adding an illustration. So here we have this yellow dashed circle, which is assumed to be the circle that the vehicle is driving. And let's begin with the case of a dynamic bicycle model that is neutrally steering. So the front slip angle and the rear slip angle are the same while the vehicle travels along this circle. The second case of an understeering vehicle is drawn up here and we see that the slip angle of the front wheel alpha f is larger than the slip angle of the rear wheel alpha r. So intuitively we see that understeering means that the vehicle kind of pushes over the front wheel. And finally the case of oversteer where the front wheel slip angle alpha f is smaller than the rear wheel slip angle alpha r. Or intuitively one could say the rear wheel is sliding in the curve. From this figure we can also see the explanation for using the terms understeer and oversteer. Namely, in the case of understeering we need a much larger steering angle than should be required for driving on this circle and in the case of oversteering we actually need a much smaller steering angle than it should be required for driving this circle. In the next videos we'll look more closely at the implications of oversteer, understeer and neutral steer for the dynamics of a vehicle and we'll answer the question which of the three is better.